Well, good afternoon, Trinity Baptist Church. It is good to see you here on this Wednesday, and I'm so grateful you've tuned in with us uh, for this Wednesday before Easter opportunity to gather together for the midweek time of uh, prayer and a word from God's Word. And I thank you for taking the time uh, out of your schedule this week. This is a special week for believers really across the world as we celebrate uh, the death, the burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I am so thankful you've taken the time to join here with us. We don't want to forget the special services that we are looking forward to this weekend. Uh, And what a great, great day of celebration it will be this coming Sunday. In fact, I want to remind you, not only will we be doing our 845 worship and our 11 o'clock worship services, uh, which we do usually do each Sunday, but we want to invite you to a special sunrise service. If you would like to join us, uh, our men are going to, we talked this morning and when we met for our Wednesday morning uh, prayer time together at eight o'clock, we talked about this coming Sunday morning uh, doing a sunrise service out at the parking lot by the cross. So uh, it might be a little bit chilly, but uh, bring bring something to bundle up in. And we're going to gather at 645. It'll be a brief service, about 30, 40 minutes probably tops. But we're going to gather at 645, uh, gather in the darkness. The sun is set to rise just a little after 7 a.m. And then we'll close out the service with a tremendous time of prayer, just thanking God and celebrating with the Lord uh, his graciousness, uh, for the Lord is risen. Uh, we will celebrate. He is risen indeed. So I hope you'll make plans to be with us. Uh, you'll even have time just to, to, uh, come to that service and then run on home if you want to change clothes and, uh, and then get back for the 845 service or the Sunday school at 10 o'clock or worship at 11 o'clock. Uh, because as I said, we will be doing both of those worship services and Sunday school uh, on Sunday morning. And then just add that little added bonus if you want to be a part of a special time of celebrating the resurrection at a sunrise service here at Trinity, we invite you at 645 for that uh, time together to uh, sing together, to pray together, and to look into God's Word and just remember that special moment uh, as those ladies early in the morning came and found that the tomb was empty. So I, I just kind of get chills thinking about it, and I hope that you'll make plans to be there with us. But I wanted to ta- ask you to take a moment and turn in God's Word uh, with me to 1 Timothy chapter 3 for just a moment. 1 Timothy chapter 3 is where I want us to look uh, as we get ready for our prayer time. You see on the email that uh, had our video here embedded in it, a place where you can print out the uh, prayer list for tonight and the remainder of the week. So hopefully you will take an opportunity and click on the prayer list, print it out, and have it uh, by your side this evening to be able to lift up the prayer needs of your church family uh, and those that uh, have been reported in. As always, you can update that prayer request uh, or prayer sheet by calling our church office. You can let Carol know by calling 704 662-9303. That's 704-662-9303. And let us um, know what your prayer need may be. And uh, or if there's something you see on the prayer list uh, that needs to be updated, we can certainly do that as well. Or you can email us, and that's just as simple. Email to office at trinitybaptist.com. That's office at trinitybaptist.com. And we would love to uh, just always want to keep that prayer list updated, keep it fresh, so that when you take it and use it in your prayer time, that it's a uh, you'll know that it's it's needs that need to be brought before the Father, and and you can pray as specifically as possible for the needs on that list. But I do want you to turn to First Timothy three, uh, sixteen for a moment. For the Apostle Paul proclaimed these words to the world. He said, and without controversy, (laughs) great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, 
seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Now, I don't know about you, but those are words that I can get a little bit excited about. And I want you just to take a moment and look at them with me. When you stop and just consider what Paul is announcing to the world, when you stop and just consider that right there, Paul is saying God was manifested in flesh. I mean, the sovereign, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God of the universe actually has condescended to enter into a personal relationship with mortal man, with you and with me. That's a very bold statement, and it's chunk full of information. And that's exactly what Paul is is saying. And if you'll just take that one statement— God was manifested in flesh, that he has condescended to enter into a personal relationship with you and with me. Just think about what he is saying. And he, and he kind of unpacks it all the way down, that the eternal God took on the flesh of man. If you just stop and think for a minute and consider that this eternal God was placed in the trough, a feeding trough, in a primitive cave of a shepherd's field. Just think about that for a minute. That God became man so that man could become like God. Not so that man could become a God, but that we could take on the character and the nature of the living God. Just consider that. Consider that he tells us that that how amazing the fact is that the Spirit of God would overshadow the Virgin Mary that she might conceive and bear a son. If you just think about that, that, that this is the same Holy Spirit that would anoint Jesus in the Jordan River when he descended in the form of a dove and lit on the shoulder of Jesus. This is the same Holy Spirit who really would minister to him there in Gethsemane on that Thursday night following that Passover meal When he would say, Father, not my will, but yours be done. It was the same Holy Spirit that would sustain him all the way to Golgotha as he traveled that Via Della Rosa through Jerusalem on the way to the cross. It was the same Holy Spirit who would raise him from the dead on that Sunday morning. Thus Paul says, justified in the Spirit. And yes, he was in fact seen by angels. Think about that. Angels who sensed his sorrow at Gethsemane. I'm talking about there were angels who sensed his suffering at Golgotha. I'm talking about angels who actually watched his stopover at the grave. And these angels, remember that great song? He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. Ah, but he died alone on Calvary's tree for you and for me. That's the gospel. You know, it was an unbelievable thing 
to the first century Jews that Jesus, the Messiah of God, would actually be preached among the Gentiles. But that's, again, what the Scripture says. He was preached among the Gentiles. Now, why was that? <clears throat> because he came unto his own, if you'll recall, but his own received him not, the Bible says. So he had been rejected. And the mystery was that many among the Gentiles actually received him for the forgiveness of their sins. And, and then a great number of people, look what it says, believed on in the world. In other words, they believed on him. A great number of people believed the word of the Lord and said yes to Jesus. And in fact, we know through history that some of them were willing to pay the price. In fact, many of them actually would give their own lives as martyrs because they believed on this Jesus. Again, this is what Paul declared to the world. You know, I think about when it says seen by angels that the very last line in verse 16 says received up in glory that it was angels who stood by as the followers of Jesus actually were were looking up and the angels they watched Jesus ascend into the clouds and it was the angels standing by them that said you men of Galilee why why stand ye gazing into heaven? For this same Jesus, this same Jesus will so come in the same manner as you have seen him leave. You know, that's the great promise this week of Easter that I think every one of us can hold on to. And I want you to think about something on this Wednesday of this holy week. Jesus did every bit of this for you, and he did every bit of this for me. So when Paul declares to the world, and without, great con without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. <laughs> he did all of that for you and all of that for me. And it's no wonder that Timothy would write, Great is the mystery of godliness. I pray that while this weekend is filled with a mystery to so many people in this world of why we celebrate, while so many don't understand the empty tomb, they don't understand the joy that you and I have, they don't understand the hope that you and I maintain. They don't understand the excitement that you and I have as we come to special holy days like this week. I hope that we'll never forget that great is the mystery of godliness. Let me pray with you. Father, how I thank you for the way you work in our lives. How I thank you for what you're doing in the life of each man and each woman who has joined with us this evening to be able to pray together, to be able to look into God's Word together, and Lord, to be able to just pour out our hearts to you in special times of prayer like we have right here and now. Father, I just pray that uh, this evening that you would 
Take each of our hearts and remind us of the significance of what we celebrate. That you would remind us that that we have a living Savior who's in the world today. And Lord, that you would remind us that, that we do not walk alone, but that we walk with our Savior Jesus, guiding us, directing us, leading us. And Father, that you would remind us today that we have placed our hope in a Savior who cannot be found in a tomb, who cannot be worshipped by his grave. But Father, we still gaze upward, not because we're looking to have seen him having left, but we are looking upward, awaiting his return, because we know according to your word that that is coming very, very soon. And Lord, I just pray that you would ready us for that moment, that you would prepare our hearts, that Lord, one of these Easter Sundays is going to be the last, one of these moments in time that we celebrate a very special day, like Good Friday or Easter Sunday, will be the last one in the history of time as we know it. And Lord, we will be finding ourselves in your throne room at the feet of our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, worshiping you forever and forever and forever. Father, I just pray that tonight, as these folks from Trinity take their prayer list and and engage in this time with you, that we all are able to do so in a very personal way, in a very intimate way, and Lord, in a very strong position of intercession as we stand in the gap for one another, as we cry out on behalf of our brothers and sisters in Christ, and Lord, as we reach toward heaven, with one hand and hold the hand of a brother or sister with the other. And Father, helping to pray for the needs in those lives. Again, we love you. We ask that you take us tonight and use this scripture just to refresh our minds of what a mighty God we serve. And thank you that great is the mystery of godliness. For it's in Christ Jesus and his holy name that we lift this prayer. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us today and It is my prayer that you will not miss out on the activities of this weekend. I know Easter is a special time. I hope there'll be some time that you'll be able to be with family. I hope there'll be some time that you'll be able to share with with your children just the significance of what this weekend is all about. And I really hope that this will be a time that families will be able to come together into the house of the Lord and just stop and consider that it really is all about Jesus and who he is, what he is all about, and what he did on our behalf. I look forward to worshiping with you at Trinity this coming Lord's Day, and what an exciting day it will be. Please make plans to be with us, whether it's uh, the sunrise service or whether it's one of the other two or whether it's the sunrise service and one of the other two, we just want to be able to gather together with you in Jesus' name. So have a great, great rest of your week, and I look forward to seeing you this coming Easter Sunday, this coming Lord's Day. God bless you.